Hey everybody and welcome to this demonstration of the Dremio Lakehouse platform. Now let's set up the story so far. We are Retail Company X and we carry a variety of products in our inventory at different locations across several different categories. Now what we want to do is we want to create a dashboard to see our inventory across different locations, product categories, what quantity of each product do we have. But in order to do this, we need to collect that data and deliver it to that dashboard. But we have that data across several different databases, such as Postgres and MongoDB. Now, traditionally, what we would have to do to solve this problem is we would take our tables from those databases. We would have to ETL it as raw parquet data sets onto our data lake. And then generally, we would curate that data in our data lake across several different layers, a bronze, silver, and gold layer, each being an additional copy of the data. We would then ETL that data over to our data warehouse, so another copy of the data. And again, all these copies cost storage. Creating these copies costs compute. And there we would start taking our data warehouse and then curating that into sub data warehouses known as data marts, which would mean additional copies and additional compute costs. Now, after all that is said and done, at this point, we would hand the data off to the analyst and the analyst would begin building BI dashboards off the data. But sometimes those BI dashboards aren't crisp, aren't fast enough, so they may need materialized views to speed up certain queries, or they might want BI extracts and cubes. Oftentimes, these kinds of accelerations for dashboards are built into the dashboarding tool. So in that case, if I'm using some sort of acceleration, some sort of caching technology inside Power BI, well, that won't accelerate my dashboards built in Tableau and vice versa. So you end up creating the sort of the same accelerations multiple times, depending on what tools different teams are using. But at the end of the day, we would deliver our dashboard with this chain of pipelines that we need to create, maintain, and pay for. Now, using Dremio, we can simplify this whole process a whole lot. We can take our tables that are in our Mongo and Postgres database and basically ETL them into just a raw iceberg tables sitting in our data lake using the data lakehouse platform, Dremio. And essentially what would happen is that we can create different products within Dremio, different data products that we can manage. So I would create a supply chain data product in this scenario, and we would land the raw data, which would be physical tables. So this is the only copy of the data we're making. And then after that, what we would do is we would model our additional layers, such as a curated layer and a production layer. This would all be curated through virtual views, virtually modeling our data without having to create additional copies that need to be maintained and create additional storage costs. We would then connect those views directly to our BI tools using the Data Lakehouse platform and its integrations with different BI tools. And if we need to speed up those BI dashboards, we have a tool called Reflections that eliminates all the work of materialized views and BI extracts and cubes, but also is tool agnostic. So the same Reflections can speed up my dashboards, whether they're in Tableau, P, uh, Power BI, or other tools like Superset, Hex, and more. And we can then deliver our dashboard in a much simpler, lower cost way. And on top of that, the Dremio Lakehouse platform has features like Git for data or data as code that's going to allow us to use branching and merging to create more validated uh, data ingestion. And also we'll be able to use DBT to help curate those layers of virtual views in a way that is gonna be very replicatable and manageable. And basically, also, because this process is so much easier, we can now hand it off to the analyst at a much earlier point. So let's actually see this in action. Okay, so here in this demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to work out the scenario that I mentioned just a moment ago, where we're going to basically take that data from the many sources uh, that Dremio can connect to, but specifically Mongo and Postgres, which I already have connected to Dremio right over here. We're going to take those tables and then ingest them. So we're going to create our data product, which will just be a subfolder within our default catalog. So here in our default catalog for our project, I'm going to create a folder called supply chain. We'll treat this as our data product for our supply chain data, which can then be governed, uh, shared, collaborated on. But I'm going to create subfolders to represent the three layers of my data. So the raw data where I'm going to put those physical tables, the curated layer, and the production layer where I'm going to put all these sort of additionally worked on virtual views, but again, not copies. So we're not expanding our storage costs as we do this. Okay, but once we actually have this structure set up, what we're going to do is we can then just run some SQL to bring that raw data right in 
to our data set. And the cool thing about Dremio is that the SQL you run against Dremio, while it can be run here in the Dremio UI, like I'm doing here, it can be run by any tool that can connect to Dremio via JDBC, ODBC, Aeroflight to automate that SQL. So you can use your favorite orchestration tools to then orchestrate a lot of this work. But here what I'm doing is I'm using create table as statements to easily take that Mongo table, that Postgres table, and turn them into iceberg tables uh, through just very simple SQL statements that will just then run through the Dremio engine and quickly land that data as iceberg in that raw folder. Okay, so basically once I complete these SQL statements, we'll run the queries and I can run multiple queries at a hit, which is really nice. Okay, and now those queries are done. And now I'm going to be able to see that those files exist now within my data product in that raw folder. Okay, which we see right there. Okay, so basically we're off to the races. Now what we want to do is create those layers of views. As I mentioned, we can use DBT to kind of set this up in a very turnkey way. So here I have a DBT project where I've configured it to have a special place to put my DBT models for those different layers. So there's a, an, a folder where I can put my raw models, my curated models, my production models. Okay, so the nice thing about uh, DBT is that it makes it, you can set up your project in a way that really clearly organizes what SQL belongs to what to make it really easy to sort of collaborate and share in this code, especially when you, your views start expanding to sort of hundreds, if not multi-hundred, or even thousands of views. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to create a curated view because we have these two tables that I want to join. So here I'm going to have some SQL uh, that basically does a raw join of those two tables. Now this is going to include all the columns, which is not necessarily what I want my production user to use, but this way I have that intermediate join prepared. And then I'm going to have a model in my production folder that actually is a version of that view that does only have the columns that I want the end user to watch. Now I can now just run my DBT models and now all those views will be curated in a few moments and uh, they'll be available on the Dremio platform. So we'll take a look, head over to Dremio and we can actually see that those views exist. Okay, so right over here, we head over to our supply chain product. I can go to my curated folder. I see the view that I, I created in that curated folder that shows a join with all the columns. Okay, so see, we have all the columns there. Then I can head over to my supply chain, my production folder, and see the view that has the limited number of columns that I wanted to show. And I look at this, I realize, hey, I really like to rename this quality column or quantity column. And I'd also see a column missing in reorder level. So I can go back and adjust the SQL in that model, just run my DBT model again, and ta-da, those views are now updated, okay? So this just makes it really easy to, again, just update those views um, and keep them the way you want them, okay? And I can see all these changes now reflected in the view. Again, all this is just SQL. This all can be done from the Dremio UI or using tools like DBT and other tools that can orchestrate SQL to Dremio. Okay, but now that we've ingested the data um, and we've ingested the data, we've now created our data product. The problem is that time has gone on and now we have additional data. So we're going to use data as code as a way to isolate the additional data we're going to add. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create a branch that's going to allow us to make changes to the table that are isolated on a separate branch that will then be able to merge in in the same way that we can use Git for code. This is going to allow us to make sure that that data isn't visible to our production users until we've fully validated it and done all the work we'd like to do with it. So actually, let's see that in action. Okay, so basically right here, what I'm doing first is I'm going to query my main branch. So basically the, the iceberg tables that we created, but I'm also going to go query that Mongo and that Postgres table that already exists to show you that, hey, look, that Mongo and Postgres table have an additional 10 records that we didn't have before. So we're gonna to need to ingest those records. So as I click here through the queries, we can see here in query one, my iceberg table only has 50 records. Well, if I click on query two, we'll see that my uh, Mongo table only has, or my Postgres table has 60 records, so an additional 10. And same thing for the Mongo table, okay? So I'm gonna to need to go ingest this data. But I'm going to do this in a way that helps isolate those changes as I go. So we're going to use data as code or the ability to do branching and merging in a very Git-like style. So as you can see here in the SQL, to create a branch, it's just simple SQL. I just write create branch. I create the branch in my catalog. And then I can just switch to that branch using a use branch statement. 
And then after that, all those inserts that I have in there will basically run within the context of that branch, completely isolating those changes. So now if I just go and I run this query, Okay, so now we can see that these queries are running. And now that the queries have ran, we'll be able to see, let's actually check, hey, did this actually work? So here I have a query of each of the tables within the, my main branch, so the main line production version of the table, and a query on the ingestion branch. So you can see that the changes we just made are only visible on that ingestion branch. So you can see here, our main production branch, still 50 records. And then if I go to that ingestion branch, we see the additional 10 records. So we have successfully isolated those changes, which means now I can peacefully go in there and run any kind of due, due duplication, null checks, um, you know, integrity uh, validations or referential integrity validations, anything I need to do to make sure that the data is what it needs to be. And once I feel comfortable that the data is ready to be published, I can publish all these changes by using a simple merge statement, the same way you would merge your commits when you're using Git. So let's actually do that. So I'm gonna open up this tab here and I'm gonna start beginning typing out a merge branch statement. And just say, hey, I wanna merge my ingestion branch and I'm gonna to wanna to merge that into my main branch in our catalog and uh, yeah, we just run this quick query and ta-da, we have now published those changes across both tables simultaneously, essentially affecting a multi-table transaction from the experience of our production users. Okay, so, and again, now if I run those queries again, querying both branches, I'm gonna see that now they are in sync. Now they have the same number of records because I've merged the commits from the ingestion branch over to our production branch. Okay, and again, all of this is just SQL that can be any sent to Dremio from any interface, not just the Dremio UI, but through JDBC, ODBC, Aeroflight, using any tool that can orchestrate SQL to Dremio. And once we have that data ready, we can now begin building BI dashboards. Okay, so we already pretty much went from having source data to building BI dashboards. And here I have this view. And what I wanna to wanna to do is take advantage of a feature that Dremio has called reflections that eliminates the need for BI extracts and cubes, because what it does is kind of just allows Dremio to abstract all the work and doing that away from you. Okay, so essentially to do that, we're gonna click on the edit the uh, the edit button for the data set, and I head over to the reflections where you'll see there's two types, raw reflections, which are replace materialized views, and aggregate reflections, which replace BI extracts and cubes. And I can optimize this aggregation reflection to optimize for any dimensions or measures that I plan on using within my BI dashboard. But once I have this all nice and configured, then all I have to do is, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the quantity, uh, the product in there, and then I hit save. And then what's going to do is going to start begin creating uh, that reflection. And then once that reflection is ready to go, we can head back to our BI tool to begin building our BI dashboards. So all those inventory dashboards we've been talking about at the beginning of this, we're going to start building now. So here I am in Apache superset. In this case, I'm actually just running Apache superset off my laptop and connecting it to Dremio Cloud. Okay. Um, and then basically here, now I'm creating my first chart, which is the inventory by location. Now I'm going to create the second chart, which is going to be our inventory based on the category of data it is. And again, all of this is just happening off queries directly on my data lake using Dremio. So every time you see these charts generate, that's a query that's being sent over the Dremio. And then I'm just setting up this last chart, which is going to be a bar chart that looks at the quantity of each product that we have. Okay, so basically I'm gonna create this last chart and then we can actually put all these charts together on a BI dashboard that we can deliver to our users. And you'll see that because we're using reflections, all these queries are happening really, really fast. We're talking about sub second queries, okay, and this which can happen on data sets of, of very large sizes because of the way reflections works and how it optimizes that acceleration process. But we can see here that those queries benefited from that acceleration with those little lightning bolts right next to the name. And yeah, that's basically, you just saw end-to-end -end ingesting data to BI dashboards using the Dremio Lakehouse platform.